Hi, I'm Jennifer Castlerine, and I'm here today with Eris Ecos, Research Director of Institute SETI in Athens, Greece. Eris is an 18-year member of ISHC and our guest today on Member Spotlight. How are you doing, Eris? I'm okay, Jennifer. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your work at Institute SETI? Well, as research director, I do a few things, which is uh, one is to create a documentation center about the about Greek tourism, so collecting data from various sources and disseminating this data to the stakeholders of Greek tourism. Uh, the other is using this data and other data to carry out studies or manage studies done for the institute. Uh, which again are distributed to the state to the stakeholders. Then uh, we also do some work which is internal to SETE. SETE is the Greek Tourism Confederation. So for policy issues and uh, advising the board and the president of SETE uh, about you know current issues regarding tourism, but also about the long-term strategy of tourism in Greece. A member of ISHC for 18 years. Um, and it's also ISHC's 35th anniversary year. So you've probably seen a lot through the years. Um, but what has kept you back or kept you coming back, I'm sorry, year after year um, and renewing your membership? I think I like the, you know, there's a certain camaraderie. I like very much the conferences. It's the conferences are probably some of the most open forums I have been through, you know, where people are very, open discussing and going in depth uh, in the various issues and also I have at times found support in my work by members who are more knowledgeable on some matters than I am and it's been very helpful addressing the you know the society and finding a member who can uh, advise or help with the project. Why don't you tell us about a project that you're working on um, something that you are proud of, you're really interested in, we'd love to hear it. Okay, uh, I'll tell you two projects. One we completed a little while ago and one that we're currently working on and are very much within the scope of what I said I do at the Institute. And a recent project uh, is one I managed and that was to create a strategic plan for Greek tourism uh, towards 2030. Now, what is, I think, very interesting and uh, different to, what, uh, to other plans that have been created in the past is that we moved from the what to the how. And by that, I mean most of the plans, I think all probably, unless I'm missing anyone, was about what were the products that Greek tourism should focus on. So we step one, one uh, move further and we said, how are we going to do that? You know, okay, sun and beach is a product, mice is a product, uh, cultural tourism is a product, yachting is a product, but you know, we know that, but how are we going to do? So what we did is we, uh, we took the whole of the country and we covered most of it by selecting 36 destinations and developing for those 36 destinations roadmaps on how to develop tourism in the in each of one hmm. so these uh, these roadmaps uh, to put it very briefly have uh, specific product market combinations so you know sun and beach for the germans or cultural for the americans or whatever the case may be and then for each one we we listed the actions that are necessary to be taken uh, in order to, to achieve uh, the target. I, I, I can say that we listed about 2,000 separate actions going from you know, wow. the really, really hardcore investment like uh, building a road or uh, improving the infrastructure to very soft uh, ones like you know extending the hours of opening of the archaeological sites uh, or uh, the museums. So I think with that, uh, we created a, a tool really, uh, which the various destinations can use either as it is, or, you know, take the methodology and adapt it because, you know, it's not written in stone. It's basically a proposal to the stakeholders uh, about how to go about it. The other project, which is very exciting, which we are doing at the moment, as uh, we are cre creating a data hub 
which will be open to Greek uh, tourism stakeholders uh, that will include uh, data regarding the flow of travelers and uh, the flow of revenues, regarding planned air routes, indications about demand, data for tourism company. You know, it, it will be really a hub where people, stakeholders can go and find uh, the data they are looking for to take sensible decisions about uh, the future of their companies or the future of the region or a national policy. This came out as a necessity from a study, uh, from another study we did about the digital transformation uh, of the tourism sector in Greece. And, you know, the, the need for people to have good data at their finger trips was yeah. really one of the basic uh, conclusions. And that's why we decided to move next step. That's something we can do ourselves within the Institute and we are developing this at the moment. Do you have, or when do you expect that to be ready for use? Towards the end of the year, in October, more or less. That sounds exciting and really great for Greek tourism. If you were going to recommend any destination in Greece for someone to visit, where would that be? Well, my, my favorite destination as a local is a small island in the Cycladic Islands in the Aegean called Folegandros, uh, which is about seven and a half miles long. So you, you, know, you can easily walk it. Uh, oh, wow. in a few hours and uh, that means that you don't really have to plan much for your day <laughs> <laughs> you can just go out walk a bit and find a cafe or a restaurant or a few friends to to talk uh, to it's got a stunning landscape which is very similar to Santorini and it's actually very close oh. uh, to Santorini but you know apart from that I think <clears throat> There are many places to visit in Greece, very much depending on what you want to do. Greece is very well known for its beaches and, you know, sea and sun and yachting and the Greek islands, etc. But there are really beautiful mountains for people who like hiking. Athens is a very lively city uh, for people who want to do, you know, a city break. Uh, yep. Thessaloniki is another one. So, it, And also it's... Uh, very full of monuments for anybody who wants to do some touring around the country and see monuments and very beautiful landscapes. I mention my bucket list a lot when I talk to members mm -hmm. um, because everyone knows such fabulous places, but Santorini is definitely on my bucket list. I have yeah. not been yet. Uh, All right, well, yeah. before we go today, our last kind of member spotlight question, tell us something or tell the membership something maybe interesting, unknown, um, different about yourself. We'd love to hear it. About 25 years ago, uh, I developed a wind park in Greece. It's actually still operational. And I also did the business plan for the development of, a, of, a, of another wind park in the Caribbean, in the island of Aruba. Uh, well, that's professionally. Personally, I took up parachute jumping as a hobby when I was a university student. <laughs> <laughs> when's, the, when's the last time you jumped? 30 something years ago. I oh. Know, yeah. But I did that when I, when I was living still in the UK. But then I didn't have this option to continue when I came back to Greece. So uh, I stopped. I, I could have gone uh, to become a Marine in the Greek army, but that didn't seem very appealing <laughs> <laughs> well you should try it again sometime soon uh, apart from the jump, first jump which was really scary everything else was uh, you know it was exciting the other jumps well well thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today um, you, we're really enjoying um, spotlighting our members via video now instead of just in text and pictures mm -hmm. um, so we're very happy to talk to you and, and thank you so much Thank you very much as well. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Eris. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.